Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you how you can use the idea of a free releasing golf swing with a driver. I think there's no other club in the bag that will profit more from this and most certainly I'm sure there's a lot of you out there unconsciously slowing the club head down because of your need to try and guide the club back onto the golf ball. So if I just kind of repeat a little bit what I've been saying over the last couple of weeks. If you can break down your golf swing into its simplest form, which is just a, a number of levers all connected to one another, the top one being your shoulder, the middle one being your arm or arms when you've got two hands on the golf club, and the bottom one being the golf club. Now obviously the driver gives you the longest shaft and therefore the longest lever and the highest club speed with the same rotational speed in your shoulders. And this is something to be very aware of because a lot of you are out there actually physically trying to hit the ball harder with the driver. There's no need. The club is designed to swing the, swing the club head faster. So you are looking at making the same speed of rotation as you would do for your 7-iron. Um, that I think is really important because otherwise unconsciously you're going to start making movements that maybe you can't control and that's going to make the impact position on the face harder to actually control and also give you poor ball speed. So when we get back to the idea, just to uh, reiterate, you're turning your shoulder so your lead shoulder comes down. You are lifting your arm so your lead arm comes up. And as you hinge your wrists, you are hinging and rotating the lower arm to get the shaft on plane. As it goes back up over your shoulder and you change direction, there's an extra flattening of the, of the shaft plane. And that's then being pulled back down, not in as much that you're starting with the arms, but rather that you are turning your shoulders, which is pulling your lead arm, which is pulling the club down. At the same time, your lead wrist is going into a slight flexion before it gets into the impact release position, and then it is releasing freely through the ball. In fact, you could say that the key to the free release is the amount of tension you actually have at the top of the golf swing as you change direction. I think if you were to watch me take the club away with the same kind of tension in my arms and hands that I have when I start the downswing, then my backswing would look something like this. You can see that I am not holding it tight enough to block the wrists and therefore the weight of the club would actually make it resist the movement of the arms and catch up with me later. Because I'm holding the club tighter in the address position, I'm actively lifting and hinging as I start the club back, the club seems to almost lead my hands in the backswing. However, at the top of the swing, or I would even say just before the top of the swing, I have a physical relaxation of the arms, a loss of the tension in the grip, which is freeing the wrist joints, freeing the lower arm, freeing the trail elbow to actually feel the weight of the club in my hands. I want, as I change direction with my lower body, as my lead shoulder starts to turn up, I want this feeling of of the club being able to move of its own free will, which basically means again that the, end, the club head is resisting the movement of my hands and flattening the shaft plane. The trail elbow is being pushed down towards my body. I'm getting the feeling of it kind of collapsing slightly before I really get into this deep rotation of my trail shoulder. My arms are also pulling down, but not pushing out. I'm not using this trail elbow or arm in any way to push the club away from me towards the ball at that stage. I have more of a feeling of the club coming down vertically, although obviously that's not exactly what's happening here. Because it's all being led by the hip rotation and the shoulder rotation, 
the further I can get this lead shoulder around, the further my lead wrist will come forward. But I don't want to get into a situation where I've got a load of lean in the club head and I'm hitting down on the golf ball. On the contrary, in my address position, I'm getting the club forward in the stance, more to the lead heel. I'm standing wider in the stance in order to get my axis behind the ball. So I have the feeling of the lead shoulder and armpit also being on, the, on a level or, or slightly behind the golf ball. And that way I am trying as I come down to allow the club head to catch up with my hands in feeling before it gets to the ball. Now I know you're all gonna get scared of spooning it and putting too much loft on the ball, but I actually find with a lot of amateur golfers when they're hitting the driver, there is so much tension in the wrist that they aren't releasing the club into the back of the ball. And you really want to have that feeling of allowing the club to come out. And when you do that, you might also get the feeling that the club head is releasing a lot earlier than you ever have before. Even to the to extent where you think you are actually gonna be spooning it up into the air. It's not true. This is because feel and real aren't the same. What you think you're doing is just being compared to what you usually do. And when what you usually do is grip it like a snake that wants to bite you, then relaxing your grip will give you the feeling of losing control. As long as you are turning your shoulders in plane, you are not gonna lose control. The range of movement in your arms is not gonna allow the golf club to move out of a specific range of movement. The centrifugal centripetal forces that you are creating, gravity, are gonna help the club get back onto the golf ball. And one of the things that a lot of people notice when they're allowing their wrists and lower arms to move in this way is how suddenly effortless the, the, the swing starts to feel and suddenly how much club head speed they're able to generate simply because they are no longer fighting the golf club, but on the other hand, allowing the golf club to get back into the back of the ball. As you start to get a feeling for that, you've then got to try and get the lead side to help the release of the ball. And that basically means getting the feeling of the lead side going up and away from the ball, which is going to help the club head to come down into the ball. As if you were trying to get a straight line here from your lead shoulder down to the club head on the ball at the moment of impact, if not a fraction of a second before it. And the more active you are in getting this lead side back and up out of the way, the quicker that the golf club is going to come down and into the back of the golf ball. I have absolutely no feeling of controlling or steering the golf club through the golf ball at all. I'm simply allowing my body to turn out of the way and allowing the club to do more or less what it wants. And that's difficult, let me tell you, because unconsciously you have the longest club in the bag, the ball's not got any bigger, and the unconscious fear is you're not going to catch it, you're not gonna hit it, and therefore you're trying to steer the club head back onto the golf ball. Stop yourself doing that. Trust in your swing and trust that the physics is going to help the club head back onto the golf ball. The last thing you want to be doing is holding it tightly. If you are one of those people who isn't able to turn, isn't able to get the shoulder out of the way, then most certainly doing this is going to release the club too early you are gonna have an early release, but let's be perfectly honest, you're gonna have that anyway, and holding the thing tightly isn't gonna make the result any better. So irrespective of your ability, try and get yourself into this idea of a free release. Try and school your body to get that lead shoulder turning back and up away from the ball and allowing the 
wrist to release the club into the back of the ball and in no time at all you will actually find that you're intuitively feeling these forces that you are creating in the golf swing and a bit like throwing a stone on the water or a frisbee to your friends you start to intuitively accelerate the club through the golf ball and you're not only hitting fairways you're getting it further down there hope you liked it if you did smash that like button big big thank you to all of the patrons supporting the site i shall leave a link below as ever it would be great if you join us until the next time bye bye now